2019. I know, already, eh? How time flies. How did your 2019 start? Was it good? Yeah, well, I was drunk when it started. It started pretty good, and it's got progressively shitter since then. <laughs> we'll discuss that at the end of the video. First, though, let's talk about the chase. In the world of television, losing one shit is generally frowned upon, and most television producers will actively work to avoid it. Producers on the British quiz show The Chase seem not to be aware of this rule since they've spent a considerable amount of their time actively fucking with host Bradley Walsh. So for the poor unfortunate people who've never been able to, like, witness the glory that is The Chase... Oh man, it's a fucking good show, innit? Now, we're not taking the piss, this show's great. <laughs> I watch all the time online. I, I spent my entire Christmas getting pissed watching The Chase. When I'm not watching the Gordon Ramsay clips that, um, that YouTube recommends because of you... <laughs> because I'm, this I'm watching... channel is only subscribed to Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I recently went on to double check that. I was like, surely, surely by now he's right. added another one. <laughs> if you don't get what we're doing, just click like this channel's like official main page after you're done watching this video to give us our metrics and just see what channels we're subscribed to because it's only Gordon Ramsay. And it will only remain Gordon Ramsay as long as I rule this fucker with an iron fist. You want to add the chase to it? If it's got an official YouTube channel, it's getting fucking subscribed to after this, don't worry. But yeah, if you've not seen The Chase, The Chase is like a British quiz show. I think there's an American version. Members of the public try and answer questions. But the twist is, because there's always a twist with these kinds of shows, is that like contestants are chased by a seasoned trivia buff and like quizzing champion. And if they get caught, they lose fucking everything. I was going to clarify it's not a physical chase, but I think, no. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to leave that and let people imagine the beast running after everyone. Yeah, so we should probably clarify that because that does sound like the most metal quiz show ever. <laughs> Answer questions while being chased by a guy called the beast. <laughs> no, the, like, the chasers are, seen, like I said, seasoned quizzing champions and they have to answer more questions than you. And like the idea is like to have an advantage over them, you start as a team of four and you like, go into a chase like, individually with the chaser, and then if he catches them, they, they get dropped out of the team. And at the end, whoever managed to survive goes on a final chase, where whoever is left like have to combine their wits to try and defeat the chaser. So you've done a pretty good job there of describing what the show's about. Thank you very much. But the stars of the show. Oh yeah, the chasers themselves. You should talk about them just for a brief moment, because they're fucking hilarious. So, if, like I said then, they're season quizzing champions, which on its own sounds quite boring. So what they do is they give them flamboyant, over-the-top personalities like the Beast or the Dark Destroyer. And I don't know how to feel about the fact they call the one black chaser the Dark Destroyer, but I guess he's okay with it. And I looked them all up randomly the other day while writing this article and I went, oh, these are all like super well-known, like, in the world of quizzing, and they've all been on every British quiz show ever. They've all been on The Weakest Link, they've all been on Mastermind, they've all been on, like, Eggheads and all that shit. And I'm like, oh, this must be how these guys earn their living. And I felt like Mark LeBet, they must have been like, The Beast. Do you know how he used to, like, supplement his income when he was a teacher? How? He used to go to Butlins and just win on the quiz machines. <laughs> so... <laughs> so he said, oh yeah, I was a teacher and I was earning more money just on quiz machines in pubs. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just do this. The Beast, I think, is six foot seven. Holy he weighs shit. 300 pounds. The guy is a fucking unit. The, word, the words absolute unit do not even come close to describing the immensity of this man. But oh, like, like, they're all amazing and they're all great. And I love the fact that they just shit-talk everybody. I think there was a woman who come on once, and they ask her, Oh, so what are you going to do if you win today? He's like, I want to buy some tea. And the chaser just keeps making fun of the fact she's got no tea. The chaser will offer you. You need to go to the dentist, 2.30. It's not funny. <laughs> and that's his job. <laughs> She's got no teeth. <laughs> but why does she want to buy teeth, Brad? <laughs> why, why does she say it? <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's going in, isn't it? <laughs> because we're talking about... Oh, Bradley, I feel for you, man. Bradley Walsh, not you, Brad. You've got to edit this shit. Uh, teeth aside... <laughs> 
lucky now. <laughs> the show initially got off to a quite rocky start, and despite the best efforts of the cast, um, reviews for it weren't that great. That all changed, though, in 2011, when host Bradley Walsh absolutely began to lose his shit at the question, in what sport does Fanny Schmeller compete for Germany? So the Fanny Schmeller incident has since gone down in the annals of British quiz show history as just fucking top tier midday entertainment. Like, it cannot be topped. And like, if people are watching something, why is it so funny? It's just, Brad put the clip in. Fanny Schmeller. So um, I just thought it goes with show jumping. <laughs> but you've not seen for how long Bradley Walsh actually loses shit. My favourite bit is, it's not even when he laughs, it's when he's trying to stop himself laughing and his face turns in on itself like Homer Simpson sucking on the super sour like, uh, mega lemon ball. He's like that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just tell, like, he's, in his head he's going, I'm gonna get fired. And he's asking himself, is it really worth my job to laugh at this joke? It's not someone laughing that's way. It's someone's trying not to laugh because you know, you know that that never fucking works. It's like when you watch someone fall over in slow motion like on ice. It's not the falling over that's funny. It's the fact when they try and write themselves for like 10 seconds. That makes it better. That's like the foreplay of like the guffaw you're going to have. It's fantastic. Getting back to Fanny Schmeller, the question understandably put Bradley Walsh on his fucking ass. And the show ground to a halt for several minutes as he tried to compose himself. Oh, right. I'd be straight down the court in the morning if that was my name. I'd have, I'd have that change straight away. Right. <laughs> If people aren't aware as well, this wasn't like an outtake. Oh, no, no, no. They, like, Bradley Walsh corpse in, like, like the industry term for like, just losing your shit. Like, it wasn't an outtake or like, you know, uh, a gaff. They left it in the show and aired it as part of an ordinary episode. And it immediately went viral. And like, websites across the internet started sharing clips of it. And apparently the producers found it so funny because the audience laughed that hard, they decided to just put it in virtually unedited. So the entire like three minute section of him just completely losing it made it into like a, sh like, a show. And they aired it and that's when the show started to get awesome. So what do you mean that that was the start of the show getting awesome? Well, after this clip went viral, a lot more people started tuning in to the chase to see more instances of Walsh losing his shit. The problem was obviously that was like a one-off moment and like the producers weren't happy with that and neither were the question setters for the show. So they decided, you know what would be really funny? Let's just start putting in really like rude sounding answers and innuendo laden questions to try and catch him out. So the Fanny Schmeller one, that cannot be top. That is up there. That is the miracle tier guffaw moment, but there must be another personal favourite for you in terms of like laugh moments on the chase. Oh man, Gobbler's Knob was good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the red, the red knob starfish. <laughs> that's not the one that made him laugh. It's like, which one of these is not a real, it's not a real species of starfish? It's like, ordinary sounding starfish, red knob starfish, chocolate starfish. <laughs> And Walsh, again, absolutely loses it. Or C. <laughs> and it's fucking brilliant. Remember as well, Dick Tingler. Oh, Dick Tingler, like Willy Wacker. Uh. <laughs> People are probably like, what the fuck? These are genuine questions. They are on a daytime British TV quiz show. A. Dick Tingler. <laughs> grand at stake here, pull yourself together. It's not even just the questions as well, he breaks down at other things other people say as well. Well that's the thing because like the producers and even the chasers themselves have said like one of the reasons the show is so successful is because of Walsh as a host and not even that he's a good host, it's him laughing that makes the show great. It's the fact that he can break that fourth wall, it's the fact he, he does occasionally like his facade breaks down because viewers enjoy that and find it funny. So even they get in on the action in later seasons, they just start taking the piss. Like that poor woman with no teeth. The governess is the one. So I watched so much like The Chase over Christmas because I think one of the TV, like one of the shit 
like digital channels had Merry Chase Mess. <laughs> they would just chase all day. So I was getting pissed watching that. And the governess is so funny. This is a great thing. I think it was a celebrity special where one celebrity was called Dick. And <laughs> the, oh, don't worry. The joke that you're thinking about, audience definitely got made and it was made by the fucking governess when she came back on stage after like dick got sent out and said oh you look pleased with yourself because well, i'm always happy after i've got some dick <laughs> i'm in a really good mood now that i've got dick <laughs> and everyone loses <laughs> it's fucking and the best bit is as well this being british tv it's innuendo so no one cares hey Walsh has since gotten wise to this tactic and reportedly has to steal himself before every round of questioning so he doesn't get caught out. And you know what? He still fucking does. Amusingly, other contestants, then as noted, even the chasers themselves have since gotten in on the action, trying their damnedest to make Walsh laugh, usually with great success, which isn't surprising considering the entire format of the show has been tilted ever so slightly to make fucking with him just that much easier. So you said the start of the year 2019 didn't start we like, certainly got better after recording this video, I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> so what happened? Like, what, what happened at the start of your well, year? We started great, I was drunk. And then, um, as you know, Brad, if, and as some people might know if they follow me on Twitter, I just put out, like, you know, a, a call to arms of sorts, just saying, it's the new year, I kind of want to, like, you know, throw myself into this YouTube business, since it's now mine and Brad's, like, primary source of income. What can I do to, like, you know, increase the amount of interaction I have with you, the fan base. And I got a couple of suggestions, one of which was start a Discord. So I, so I started a Discord and Brad, do you just want to take a guess at how long this lasted before I shut it down? A couple of days. 10 minutes. It took me 10, 10 minutes, folks. That's how long it lasted. 10 minutes before it got full of just racist memes. But then obviously, I, like, you know, God loves a trier. So I thought, you know what? Let's give it another go. And someone reached out to me and said, oh, I've set one up and I've put some like moderation in place. Like, okay, maybe this will work. Maybe that's my problem. I'm not very technically minded. That's why Brad edits these videos and not me. And I said, okay, let's try this again. Do you want to guess how long that second moderated Discord lasted before it got shut down? 20 minutes. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> so you're a bit under that time. <laughs> Four, four and get, do you want to guess why it got shut down? Was it racist memes? Yeah, it was full of racist memes again. Again, immediately. And then I found out after that fact, one of the people running it was a huge racist. <laughs> Some like 16 year old racist <laughs> meme lord. <laughs> so I, I don't mean that's reflective of Discord as a whole or the fan base. I just found it very strange that I, it was so with the best of intentions. Like, Brad, you've known me long enough now. I'm not a mean guy. I try very hard in regards to Like, they don't look like we try hard, but I really do. I really do care about how like, this, our content is perceived. And I was so upset the next day. I thought, I tried to do a nice thing for everybody. I thought, wouldn't it be great if people just come in and like just share their favourite like moments and videos or just share like shitty memes that like, might have been inspired by videos or whatever. And it immediately just devolved into racism. So I can't believe I have to say this. If you are a racist and you are a fan of the channel, fuck off. <laughs> Just fuck all the way. I don't care. I don't want your views. I don't want your money. You can fuck right off. So yeah, that was my new year. Just getting a glimpse into the seedy underbelly of the internet and a part of like the channel's fan base. I was probably better off not knowing it existed. So yeah. Ugh. <laughs>